Yeah. My name is Nathan Reed. I'm a cotton farmer in eastern Arkansas, a third generation cotton farmer. Uh, I'd rather grow cotton than anything else. Um, I, I, I guess out of necessity, I've grown other crops over the years, but I enjoy growing cotton. I want to stick with cotton. Uh, Kind of one of the reasons I got into the conventional cotton was back when, when cotton prices were even more depressed than they were now. And just kind of looking away, I had two baler pickers and looking for a way to uh, continue um, large scale cotton production on my farm. Uh, start this off, I'm not anti GMO, I'm not anti big ag business, uh, but just kind of a, a comparison between uh, 2005 when I started farming and today. Uh, cotton seed was $60 or less, or less an acre killed all the weeds, and Bogard killed all the worms. Uh, now cotton seeds $130 plus. Uh, your Roundup may kill your grasses. Uh, that's about it. Uh, Liberty seems to work fairly well, and hopefully these new technologies will. Uh, and most of the cottons are having to spray for worms at least once if we get a heavy infestation. Uh, tractor was $125,000 when I started. The tractor's $240,000 now. Picker's $300,000 when I started at $700,000 now, which we have the Baylor picker, uh, but still. Uh, you know, in 05, we had cheaper labor, chemical, fertilizer, everything, and the contract high price for December 2005 was uh, 69.50. So the contract high, when you have a doubling of prices here, and your contract high is three cents higher, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out we got to do something to stay profitable and stay in business. Um, 2005 and prior, uh, our farm made a whole lot of money selling cotton for for three cent equities and for for just over loan price. Um, I know that in this day and age, it's about impossible to get your overhead lower with the increase in, in labor prices and the increase in tractors, but uh, I think I can get my expenses down somewhat to those levels by growing non-GMO crops with generics. Um, so I, I don't grow 100% non-GMO cotton, but this year I think out of about 4,300 acres, I'll have 3,000 of the non-GMO cotton, and actually the phytogen guys here, I'm, the rest is going to be phytogen. I like, I like how... <laughs> Dow DuPont has gone about this, uh, I guess, this transition into to these uh, uh, different chemicals and, and the vari their varieties work best on my farm. Um, so uh, the economic side of it, 2017 seed prices, latest and greatest, you know, $130 plus an acre, 50,000 seed count. Uh, Non-GMOs, <coughs> we're looking at uh, for a 50,000 uh, seed count an acre, at 20 to $40 an acre. Um, last year I did a pretty in-depth cost analysis. Uh, this year I, I kind of, my computer crashed so I lost my presentation. And so, <laughs> so I redid it decided I was going to go a little different direction and just kind of show what I'm doing. Uh, but uh, I'm consistently seeing a 60 to $90 an acre savings growing uh, conventional cotton versus uh, GMO cottons. Um, I'd say I, I farm cotton on a lot of marginal ground. Uh, I don't shoot for the, the top yield uh, overall. I just need a, a good consistent yield so I know where my know what my gross is going to be to get my net more to that area. Um, if cotton goes to a dollar a pound, I don't know if I grow a whole lot of non GMO cotton. <laughs> but but where we are now it's it's work for me. Uh, two thousand seventeen University of Arkansas budget uh, for G that was just one I picked out, furrow irrigated. When you take out ginning and, and the post-production expenses, just your direct input's about $375 an acre. That's before uh, ginning equipment, interest, land rent, everything. Uh, 24D or, or the other technologies, you're probably looking at least $25 an acre by the time you add the tech fee and the chemical. Uh, so you're looking at it, you know around $400 an acre uh, production expense, uh, just a direct input cost before you get uh, to all these other things. With the uh, University of Arkansas budget for uh, conventional cotton furrow irrigated, it's about $300. Um, so, you know, you're talking $75 an acre is what the university is budgeting, that, that, how much cheaper you can grow it. And that's been my experience on the farm. I'd say somewhere between 60 and 80 $90 an acre is where I've been. Um, the biggest, really, really the weed control cost about wash on my farm uh, but the biggest uh, the biggest cost is your your thirty dollars or less for, for worm control. Uh, it's just something you can't get around. So, uh, how do I do it? Uh, you know, it, it's the system I use on my farm. and kind of come up with. It's worked for me. We're in an area of very bad pigweeds. I mean, we were kind of outside of Georgia. We were kind of ground zero uh, in our area for pigweeds. So, uh, 
most of my acres have cereal rye. I grow 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 conventional cotton on ground that doesn't have the cereal rye on it, but the, the best way for weed control that I found is to start with a good crop of cereal rye. Uh, there's plenty of presentations on cover crops and cereal rye here, so but uh, what I do is I broadcast 50 to 70 pounds an acre in the fall. I pick my cotton, broadcast between a bushel to a bushel and a half in, into the standing stalks. Uh, then I cut my stalks with a flail mower. Uh, then I'll go, if I have any bad ruts or anything, uh, washouts, I'll go and, and run a field cultivator as lightly as I can to kind of fill in the ruts and the washouts. Uh, and then generally I'll go along the ends and the washouts and, and reseed again with my self-propelled fertilizer spreader uh, with another full rate. So we'll have a double rate anywhere we have washing or, or along the ends where you seem to get more ruts and washouts. Uh, then after I do all that, I'll run a do-all with the, with the boards taken off, just a three-point hitch, wheel rich do-all. And it, it kind of, if you have any ruts, it kind of knocks the ruts down a little bit. This is all on hipped up ground, but it kind of knocks the ruts off, ruts down and uh, uh, helps to incorporate the, the cereal rye. Uh, so that's a picture of kind of after, after we get the rye plant, you can still see I have, have good beds and, and uh, um, the only tillage I plan, I kind of learned this from Alan sitting over there from Missouri and those guys, the only tillage I'll do is in the, in the summer, but right before we start to irrigate, we'll run a, some, some sort of middle buster through there to kind of clean out the middle. Um, and now kind of in a ro corn rotation every three or four years after my corn, I'll tear everything down and, and start over. Is what I've been doing. I don't know if, if, it, if the no-till continues to work and, and I can keep my fields in good enough shape, I'll probably will leave it. Uh, so after cereal rye, that's what we do in the fall. When we get in the spring, early, uh, I get out there kind of as quick as I can and spray dicamba and harmony. So any winter weeds that are in that rye, it kind of takes care of them. And then I've been coming back a couple weeks before I plant and putting reflex out. Uh, I don't feel with this PPO resistance, it's worth the extra trip with a spray rig. So this year I plan on uh, just doing Valor with my dicamba and harmony uh, just to save a trip. Um, and then, so what's that? Uh, and that's kind of, about the stage it'll be at when we burn down, maybe a little bit, little bit shorter than that, but uh, uh, generally that's that's where we want to be. You can kind of see by using the do all. Sometimes you'll kind of knock, knock a little bit of that rye off the top of the row, which once it starts growing you can't see it. But I like it because there's not a root wad right there in the center that you're having to plant through. And it's easy. I mean, we did 5,000 acres of rye this fall, and it, it really was not an issue. I just followed the pickers around in front of the stalk cutters. Uh, then anywhere from two weeks to 24 hours before I'm going to plant my uh, my cotton, I uh, go in with 40 ounces or so of generic Roundup. Uh, rye has been very easy to kill with Roundup. That's one of the reasons I like it a lot. It gets a lot of growth. So uh, if I have a lots of resistant ryegrass to Roundup, I'll actually add some uh, generic Select. Um, I like to... Uh, Whatever I plant into the rye, I like for it to still be standing up and still at least have a green tint, uh, either either solid green or just have a little green shade to it. When the stuff starts falling down and matting over, it's really hard to plant through. And, and it, I mean, it's it is very scary to go out there and waist high or chest top high cereal rye and plant a crop. But but that's that's been to me the easiest way to do it. Where we've had trouble is when we kill it when it's half boot top high and it falls over and mats up and it hairpins when you're trying to plant. Um, so uh, planting in the cereal right, standing rye, right, that's, that's some I probably killed about eight days before you can see it's got a little green tint but it's 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 starting to dry out. Uh, very scary at first, easier to plant through. Um, so you don't have to grow the rye with the conventional cotton but it's to me, it's been the easiest, cheapest way to make sure we get really good weed control. It's got so much, many more benefits. I, I pretty much quit, quit deep tillage on my farm. Uh, I feel like the rye kind of helps with, with everyday compaction, taking it out, uh, water infiltration. Uh, it's amazing that a crop like that, you would think would be a nightmare, but you can actually get a spray rig in that a whole lot quicker than you can bare ground in the spring. Um, so, uh, with the rye too, I hadn't gone into the blends, but there's really not much you need to do to a planter. I've got airbags, and then I use a cotton closing system, but I have the little serrated displays. That's really the only modifications I've had. I have some row cleaners, but we don't even use them half the time. They're, they're really just, if there's any cotton left on the row, 
cotton stalks, it kind of throws the stalk off. But as far as planting through the rye, it's just not been an issue. Uh, after I get through planting with my, uh, you can see here, I, I sprayed around the end of this field with Roundup and break early just to control, because that's where you where you kind of have a weak stand of rye on the ends and stuff is where you might run into issues with pigweed starting to infiltrate the field. So I'm starting to kind of early on ring it with break. Uh, break is a great herbicide. It's just way too expensive. So uh, you can see that's the live rye and that's the stuff I killed earlier. Uh, right after we plant, I'm planting about 50,000 seed. Uh, I actually drill the cotton I found with the rye or even just stale seed bed. I just don't need the hill drop. Uh, we just don't have the crusting issues. Uh, I found that you can plant a lot deeper in the rye and still not have the issues with, with standability. So I went to drill cotton just because I, I think it, if you if you have something mess up and you miss a whole row or a whole uh, four seed drop hill, then you got a problem, you got a big space. But with, with the drill cotton, I mean, I guess theoretically you could get a 50% stand and still be fine uh, as long as it's even. So. Uh, after I plant, I spray Paraquat, Direx, and, and a cheap pyrethroid for cutworms. Uh, Paraquat accomplishes a few things. Kills any pigweeds that are out there that, it, that have come up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, we're still kind of unsure on the cereal rye, how it interacts uh, with cotton. We know it has a leliopathic effect on pigweeds, produces its own natural toxin on certain plants. Uh, a lot of that they think it could be from when the green is drying down and when, you know there could be some some issues with cotton uh with the ger i guess the germination on it so by spraying that paraquat it it's all it's got the roundup in the system it's going to die but it may take two or three weeks and i've ran into that issue before where i didn't put paraquat it turns off dry the the, the crop is or the the cover cereal cover crop is dying but it's drying the soil out the whole time and it turns off dry and you get in, you can get into some severe situations so by spraying the paraquat, it crisps it up, turns it brown overnight. Uh, you don't have as big of an effect with the green bridge because I guess you have a, a four day to a week period that you don't have before the cotton comes up where you don't have a green cover crop growing. I think it helps to mitigate that somewhat. Uh, I still put the dollars worth of pyrethroid in just because cutworms can eat your lunch and it's, it's a very cheap insurance. Um, what I do, another thing I do like about the system by leaving it green to you plant, if you have an extremely wet spring, that rye is actively growing and actively drying out that soil. So you can get in a whole lot earlier uh, with a green cover crop than you can without. Uh, then post emerge, that's you can see, see it coming up through there. Uh, I generally try to get in within a week and a half to two weeks and get a shot of dual out uh, just to, uh, just to. You have to control the pigweeds with residuals. So, uh, and then sometime within the next 10 to 14 days, I'll, I'll go in with staple and select. Uh, pretty much every, when I say I'm using trade names, but generally I, I use 100% generics if I can. Uh, staple, there's not one, but, uh, and so we're, we're doing that. Staple really helps with the morning glories, kind of the, the a few odd weeds that Roundup picks up that you don't realize you have till you <laughs> till you don't use Roundup, but but it, it's been very good. It's like it's been good on the grass uh, and staples still in our area. Even though we have the ALS resistant pigweed, staples seems to provide a little bit of or a decent amount of uh, residual on the PPO or residual for pigweeds. It won't touch one that's up, but I, I, I'm seeing. Fields I sprayed, sprayed staple on have better pigweed control than not. I don't know if that's just a field or. Uh, then after that, and sometimes if there's some grass here, I might put the, the, the select in there and just spray the staple, or I might, this combination can kind of, it's kind of interchangeable, uh, but I like to get two shots of dual plus these chemicals. Um, the, we're seeing, it seems like the dual's not working as well. I might try some prowl on some. Uh, I know they say it doesn't work either. I know they say it doesn't work either, but uh, when I used yellows last a few years ago, I had decent results with them, so I, I might try that. Then I'm laying by with the old bicycle rigs. I don't use hoods. I just have the old single spray tip on a, on a wheel with MSM and Caprol. And I mean, it, I don't see how you can get much better as far as <laughs> morning glory control and even uh, small weeds. I mean, you, you get pretty good kill with that. So. Uh, so that's just another picture of uh, 
you know, five or six days after it came up. And as you can see, I mean, you can drive by and you can't really see much out there until you kind of get out and start looking. Uh, but, but eventually that starts matting over. You can see there it's already starting to kind of fall down. And, and within two to three weeks after planting, it's, you really don't have much standing. It's just kind of a thick mat of vegetation. Uh, so that's, that, that's actually the same field, kind of the same shot. Uh, what's that, five leaf cotton or so? Um, so the recap <coughs> on the weed control, I'm doing an early burn down with Dicamba, first shot in Valor, uh, coming back 20, or before I plant, um, 24 hours to 10 days before planting, spraying Roundup, uh, pre-emerge behind the planter with Paraquat, Nyrex, and a Pyrethroid, post applications of dual, staple and select, and then another shot of dual prow, uh, MSA, MSMA and Caparol lay by. Uh, some additional weed control steps I take. Uh, I actually spot spray my whole crop with Gramoxone. I just send the guy out uh, with Gramoxone hoods uh, and say he's pretty good with them. I say just when you see pig weeds, lower it down and turn it on. <laughs> if you don't see any, raise it up and turn it off. Uh, and that, and we generally try to do that before the, the, the whole crews come in. Uh, I do have a, a whole crew come in and chop my whole farm twice, but it's been about $5 an acre. I mean, with the rye, I mean, you're gonna get some big weed escapes, but generally it's not gonna be a disaster like you do, like you see where you have the round that are a, a half an acre that's solid, you're just gonna get one or two here and there. It looks horrible, but but 10 guys in a day can chop a 200 acre field and it's, it's it's great so uh you always have the option for everything but pig weeds to spray in bulk late season to kind of pick up if you get a morning glory infestation or or uh, coffee beans or some some other stuff so uh a lot of times since i grow cotton on heavier clay soils uh we get some some uh, coffee beans and so we'll we'll spot spray in bulk i think i've sprayed in three years of conventional crops sprayed one field solid within within bulk but uh so we kind of do that late and then uh, uh, let's say I, before my last dual application or right before lay by just kind of depending on when we're laying our poly pipe I'll, I'll pull my air, irrigation furrows with a small buster uh, just to, to, to blow those out to make the water a little easier to run also to kind of reshape the bed because like I said I'm trying to go into a, almost a no-till situation where I don't really do much groundwork in the fall um, Say the biggest expense is worm control. Uh, I use Besiege, it's karate and Graviton, and it's it's a residual worm control product. In my three years that I've been growing it, I had to spray a full rate twice one year. That's really the, the maximum amount. Uh, and you you do get some, uh, it's got karate, so you get you pick up a little bit of plant bug activity. Um, so you, you can offset some of that cost because generally we're spraying for plant bugs and we're spraying for worms anyway. Uh, last year, I think I banded six ounces at lay by, and then we were so late we didn't put the full 12 ounce rate. We put eight ounces on late season to kind of pick up the inworm. So I was at twenty dollars for my worm control. Um, and like I say that's, that's really your biggest expense. Uh, the varieties I plant, I planted UA222. Uh, Mr. Youngman is here. He's actually the he has the Dr. Bowen is here who bred it. Mr. Youngman has the license to to distribute it. Seed source genetics. Uh, it's a phenomenal variety. Uh, I said 250 acres in 14, 1,000 in 15, and 2016. Next year, I plan on having about 2,000 acres. Uh, it's a very early season, fast fruiting variety. I uh, got a phenomenal fiber package. I think my loan average was uh, 56 and a half cents this year. So I mean, that's a that's hard to beat. It was it was the best cotton at RGM overall uh, on the fiber package. Uh, Dr. Bill Robertson and I ran a test against kind of the latest and greatest transgenics. With, with UA222 and some other conventionals, and uh, we grew them under conventional conditions uh, in, a, in a conventional cotton field, and it actually was the highest yield. Uh, there was three right there together that weren't statistically uh, different, but, but it was the highest yield. So it's got the genetics uh, to, to compete with anything on the market. Uh, 2015, I had a 1,500 pound field, and I think last year my best field was about 1,400 pounds. So, uh, Overall, uh, I did have about 600 acres of dry land, and it's it's not a not a phenomenal dry land variety. It's just too fast 
in two short season, two fast fruiting. I mean, it can be phenomenal with one rain, but uh, so so I, I, I'm kind of looking for more of a a mid early mid uh, to put on some dry land acres conventional. Uh, but it's uh, say so I had a uh, I had one one spot of UA two 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 that a, it was in a field with a corner and this dry land over here and I, it got watered once and my pipe blew out and it picked 1,200 pounds and we tied it off so it had one water it picked 1,200 pounds the row next to it that didn't get that water and picked 700 so you know what a difference one rain makes but but I've been very happy with the variety and continue to plant that uh, so in the future. I'm trying to, uh, I'm losing, I'm hemorrhaging money on my farm growing 30 bushel dry land beans. It's just, there's just no profit in them. So what I'm trying to do is, is move to move most of my dry land acres away from soybeans and into uh, a, a cheap conventional cotton crop. This is kind of what I'm gonna do this year. Uh, I think I can put a cheap conventional cotton crop in for the similar to a Cadillac dry land soybean crop. Not including harvest expenses, but, but just direct inputs, we can get pretty close when you start talking about fungicide on beans and fertilizer and everything. Uh, I think I can can uh, not be much more expensive. I, I don't know if it's going to work out, but right now I'm thinking 766 pounds will cover everything. Uh, anything above that will be profit, so we'll see. Like I say, I'm a cotton farmer, and so I'm going to try it. Uh, I'm going to try a thousand acres of other varieties. There's some early mids and mids out of Texas. I'm going to going to try just on some dry land acres and, and so and then Dr. Bowen hopefully at some point will release some more varieties too. We're, we're getting more and more every year so uh, any questions? I, I'll release some more I don't know if they're better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> questions for Nathan? Yes. So is the, is the top of your bed pretty clean when you play it? There, I mean, when uh, it looks I mean, like, it looks you, like the seed you, falls if down you all in the dig part. down there, I mean, there'll be a root wad every once in a while, but there's about a six inch strip that, you know, pretty clean. <laughs> okay. So, any other questions? At the uh, Arkansas State Support, you were talking a little bit about the different varieties of cereal rye. Could you share with us a little so bit? So, what that? last year I've been growing for three or four years. Last year I had Ryman, it's a northern variety. It did not control the pig weeds as well and did not grow off as well. You really want Elbon or a Breezy are the southern varieties. Uh, Elbon, and, and there's a lot of, they're starting to do some experimenting on the allelopathic properties of it and they think that, that uh, Ryman does not have as many allelopathic properties of pig weeds. What do you figure in for your cost for seed and planting of your rye? See, I grow my own rye. Last year, I mean, you know, we were paying 12 to $14 a bushel for it, buying it outright. I leased a 200-acre sand blow for $50 an acre, and I, I figure last year all in, I was about $5 a bushel max. You're spending it out with a spreader card? Yeah, a big, well, you can do it with a fertilized buggy. I've got a self-propelled fertilized <coughs> spreader. I just keep it parked over there on, kind of lurking on the edge. <laughs> and then <laughs> whenever they get through, we'll just take off running, so. Do you think you've seen any aleopathic effect on the cotton from your cereal rice? I, I don't know. I don't think I have. I don't. I don't. I can't. I haven't either. Really. Yeah. I, I wondered about. It. And so I, you know. I, I think that scares some people when you talk. Oh, it scares hell playing into smaller that stuff. Smaller seeds, stuff like pigweed, real small seeds, so you can see it more on pigweed than you will on cotton. I think why, plant why, death. Why would that be? I don't know. It's just what I've read. Well, it'd be just like a residual herbicide, wouldn't it? Yeah. Doesn't really affect the pig seeded. I don't know enough about it either, Fred. It's just like morning glories and coffee. Fred, they said that smaller seed is what it affects more than the smaller seed. Selectivity oh, there. Have you tried break yet? Yeah, I had uh, whew, 800 acres last year. It it worked phenomenal early, yeah, right. yeah. but at the end of the year, I really didn't. Probably my worst my worst pigweed infested field was a break field. Some of that was I was like I spent all this damn money. And I probably pushed off that field a little. It was the furthest field away from me. And, well, I got break on it. It'll be all right. But, but I, it's just too expensive right now. You know, it kind of negates if you're talking about saving 60 to $80. Because I, I, I think a lot of on, on marginal cotton ground, 1,050 to 1,100-pound cotton, I feel like with conventional cotton, I'm doubling my profit. You know, on 13 and 1,400-pound cotton, it, it might be better to go with a transgenic. But... But where I'm really seeing the returns is on marginal cotton ground that most people would put in soybeans. 
when you spray break for $35 an acre, it, it's not near as incentive wise. Because <laughs> like I say, on some of my cotton ground, that money I'm saving by planting non GMO seed is, is my profit. <laughs> It's, but see, we're killing it all. With, by the time you spray the, uh, if you do have rye, uh, you do have rye grass in your field. By the time you spray the the Roundup and then the the we'll put Select in there if we got a rye grass problem and the Gramoxone, if you can get it before it heads out, you're really seeing less and less of it. So, I actually kept some last year. I didn't get a rye stand, and I kept. <laughs> And we spray select on it heavy, then them uh yeah. Like yeah. 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 But I also grow, I mean I had fifteen hundred acres of conventional soybeans. I'm hundred percent non GMO soybeans on my farm. We get a little premium for them. That's been my way to I had the best bean crop I ever had. Do you think the cereal rye affects your water relations? Oh absolutely. It makes it I mean it, it We've gone between pipe planter and cereal rye, I've gone from watering every seven days to every 10 to 12 days. I mean, I'd say I've cut my water usage 30% on my farm in three years. So it's, uh, it's got a lot of good attributes. And that's the reason I don't really, I don't really factor it into my conventional cotton production because I'm trying to get it on 100% of my acres. And it, it pays for itself in so much more ways through water conservation and erosion, not deeply. What, what about your seed trip? Did you talk about your seed trip? On cotton? Yeah. I mean, we're just standard state treatment, whatever Mr. Yeah. Young puts on there. Yeah. You run Gaucho last year. Yeah, we're running Gaucho and insecticide. Spray trying to. 